everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I am back with another energetically channeled video. This one is something I've been saying for decades of my life goes on and it's very interesting that it's now hitting the media in 2024 in a way that is forcing people to come out of the Neptunian illusion and fantasy and disbelief and forcing people to see the reality of what goes on in the entertainment industry and how these people that control our lives through the production of their agendas on camera called TV shows through the boob tube, aka TV, big screen movies, are completely, completely against most of our values when it comes to how they treat children, what they do to children, what the behind scenes is with all of these men who are bearded all over Hollywood, but not bearded in a sexual adult sense. They're bearded because they're part of the pedal club. Okay, they may get married. They may have their children, such as Brian Singer did, had a child with a woman. How can you not know what that dude is? Like, what's he going to do to his own child? Which is something they do in these families. They pass their own children around. I'd be mighty scared if I was his wife. We have Dan Schneider, also married. Supposed to be the genius of Nickelodeon. Just, just genius, y'all. So let's start with Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon is a TV company corporation network that was conceived on December 1st of 1977. I don't have the exact time, but I ran a noon chart. It seemed like those people probably wouldn't get to work until noon. So a noon chart it is. That puts it as late degree, 28 degree Aquarius rising. That puts it at sun in Sagittarius conjuncting Neptune, the movie TV illusionary planet conjuncting the sun, and it puts Pisces also in the first house. So a dominant Pisces rising after the two degrees of Aquarius, 28 degrees, the two degrees it has to cross into the Piscean energy in opposition to the Saturn in Virgo. I found that very interesting. So the descendant has Saturn in Virgo. That's always going to catch play, okay? So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a network, Nickelodeon, that allowed its top producing show earners to get away with the child abuse of actors and entertainers on that show and God knows whatever else, while supplying pictures, documentation, tapes, and stories to every other person in their club in Hollywood, which goes all the way from Brian Singer to Mark Collins Rector, who, you know, his corporation, is that guy in jail? No. Digital Entertainment Network, where they were doing shit online ahead of his time, but he left because of the child sexual abuses, abuse. Uh, Marty Weiss, Brian Peck, uh, we've got all of these people, Brian Singer, X-Men. I mean, for years I've heard about him. He likes them about 14 and under. Uh, we have Kevin Spacey, I said that. We have uh, Woody Allen. We have all of these people. What I find particularly interesting about the story that's breaking about Nickelodeon, which we, most of us know, I mean, anybody in Hollywood, we know this, we know this, we know this. I did find it interesting that Nickelodeon was conceived with a Virgo Saturn. At the time frame, Saturn was in Virgo because Hollywood itself, the city of, is a Virgo city. It isn't a Leo city. It is the idealized perfection of the stars, Virgo, not like they are royalty. They are stars. Remember, anytime you get Virgo prominently placed in a chart, you get a past and prior life connected to being the upper echelon. So society says, you know, I mean, whatever. Um, but so they say, so Hollywood is geared towards calling people stars having award shows for themselves, by themselves, where everybody looks perfect and they pretend with their wives and their own kids. You had somebody like Bradley Cooper talking about how he walks around naked in front of his six-year-old daughter or eight-year-old daughter, however old she is. Not a problem. We call that grooming in the real world. We call that grooming. Just because your father did it to you, we call that grooming, okay? Grown-ass men can put some clothes on and don't tell me about the nude community. I don't care. If you're all adults and naked, have at it. But the fact is you bring kids into it. You know why you bring kids into it. So when we're looking at the industry, I had to look at Dan Schneider's chart because he bugs me. 
He just bugged me because if he wasn't a writer and Nickelodeon and a producer, nobody would ever talk to him. I mean, look at him. That is why he went for that kind of job. And I find it super interesting. He's a double Capricorn. Now, Capricorn is supposed to age like fine wine, and they get younger when they get older. So they, they tend to age backwards, like Benjamin Button, okay? However, and they work hard their whole lives, and it is in the later part of their lives, okay? So he's born in 64. He's actually 60. He's born of that peer group, okay, the, the, the tail end of the baby boomer, boomers being 64. He is born, he's at an age where as a double Capricorn, he should be like super succeeding in his career. But look what's happening. The energy has flipped for him. So something about his energy is not succeeding. I feel like my camera's uh, blurry. I'm going to move it just a little bit. See if I can get it back into focus. I do this every time. See if it focuses back. Um, yeah, there we are. I can see when it's blurry. Earlier on when I was getting ready to do this uh, video, I heard a huge bang over there. There's nobody here. It's just my studio. And I got the impression it was uh, Brad Redfro coming through. And so I was focusing. And it's like he's interested watching this. And the first thing I heard in my head was like, this, like, no one believed me, and this didn't happen when I was a kid. Like, no one talked about that, which brings me to Drake Bell, who speaks out. Uh, he's a man and a grown man at this point. I mean, an adult male speaks out about the sexual abuse he experienced. Men don't normally do that, and we don't take men seriously as a society. We think all of the inappropriate behavior is with women, which we are taught in our society. You see how they agendize everything to stop us from seeing what they really want, which is the harnessing of energy through the sodomy. So the sodomy ritual is an energetic ritual practice used in high forms of occult magic on the negative side, obviously, because they're using the technology of abuse through energy in order to control people to hide behind their energy in order to gain their power. You see that? It's going crazy. That is Brad in the background. I can feel him around me like right over here. So I'm going to have to make it stop. Um, it does this sometimes. You know that. I have so many videos where my eyes are like, I go up to the camera, stick my big face in the camera and try to get it to stop. But as far as Brad Renfro is talking, drug addicted, tortured with the thoughts and the shame of the people that abused him while still being controlled through the sodomy ritual, okay? Still being controlled through that ritual. So there's two things that are going on in this Nickelodeon case. There's two things um, in reference to people like Brian Peck and Dan Schneider. There's a predilection to abuse and to harm and a sociopathic behavior towards it. Because who can harm children? I don't care if you employ them. Like, what are you doing? Secondly, that speaks volumes to what they experienced as children. So the first thing we should do is we should go back to Brian Peck's family and we should go back to Dan Schneider's family and out the pedos in their family because they inflicted these two idiots on the entertainment industry to harm multitudes of people. Now let's get back to Dan Schneider's chart. Double Capricorn, Earth Dog. We have him at... I just lost his, um, ah, we have him as January 14th of 1964, double Capricorn, born at 1054 AM in Memphis, Tennessee. So when we're looking at his chart, there's a stellium in Capricorn. I obviously, when I look at the chart, I, I can see just instantly in my head what the problem is, but that's not exactly scientific when it comes to the chart reading, but I don't have time to read the whole chart. So we have Sun, Moon, South Node, Mercury in Capricorn. Okay, that is a stellium. We then have Saturn, Mars, and Venus in Aquarius. Now, Venus in Aquarius is an interesting one because Venus in Aquarius is friendly to everybody. They often get accused of flirting with people and they don't flirt with them. It's just like they're being friendly because it is a kind of mentally focused sign, all right? It's an air sign and they're focused in the art of the conversation and what they can learn from it. And they're able to compartmentalize so they can talk to you about something and not want to sleep with you or flirt with you. 
And as Venus in Aquarius can also do, Aquarius can become quite perverted when aspected, which I think would be the case here. Now he has his Mars in Aquarius, so that Mars is in an out of sign conjunction by degree to his sun, okay? So it's going to aspect his Venus and it's going to aspect um, his uh, Saturn at the same time. So his perverted thoughts are karmically, we have Pluto and Aquarius now, going to be brought to the surface. The other thing I found super fascinating was Saturn conjuncting Venus, okay? And Venus in the 11th and Venus conjuncting the 12th house cusp. That is a hidden kind of sexual thing. Venus in the 12th is hidden love affairs. It can be in any direction. It can be you're a closet case. It could be you're screwing your neighbor's married wife. You're screwing the girl at the deli, whatever. It can be something you don't even think. Like just hidden is the is the element of it. So look at the behavior of Dan Schneider. Hidden as far as sleeping with girls under the age of 15. Okay, starting with Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes, April 3rd, Aries in aspect to his double Capricorn and his ascendant is in Aries. So Dan Schneider is an Aries rising. He is starting a new family cycle in his family. I'm laughing because my instinct tells me with his Aries rising, he had to buck the system of his family and he was supposed to move it in a different direction and didn't, okay? Fell for the same behavior because in these perpetrators, we also have childhood victims, which is why I say you have to go after the initial perpetrator and stop the trauma there. You have to fix your own trauma. Dan Snyder was paid for his perversion. He was awarded for his perversion. Everybody has kept his mouth shut and he has the audacity to say at this point, well, the network executives saw my scripts and saw what I was doing and they didn't find anything wrong with it. Uh-huh. Because you're a money maker and anybody will suck dick for money. We have to stop doing that. We have been brainwashed into thinking money is the be all and end all. We have to pay our bills, so we have to do what they say. No, you don't. And I've got quite a number of stories from parents that I met at family dinners going back probably 2014 all the way around with kids, all of those kids, not all of them, but a lot of them on Nickelodeon I met through family events, the other side of the family, and some of the mothers of those Nickelodeon kids literally took their kids out of it for Dan Schneider, okay? In other words, because of Dan Schneider. Now, people poo-poo that and they look at it like, well, you probably weren't good enough. No, they weren't going to allow the abuse. A parent stepped in. In Amanda Bynes' case, her father allegedly was, you know, encouraging her career and dialed up. So a lot of these families that are intergenerational, reincarnated energetically, host families from prior times, go through the abuse, die from the abuse, perpetrate the abuse, control the abuse, bring the abuse out front in public through entertainment, royalty, politics, medical, and then inflict it right back around and continue in a cycle karmic loop because they are tricked through the shame and guilt when they incarnate out of this energy plateau that we're on. And I call this planet a plateau because we can't seem to get out of it. And I'm being serious. Anyway, Mr. Snyder was an Aries is. I keep saying was. I wonder what that's about. Anyway, is an Aries rising. Jupiter conjuncting his ascendant. Now, Jupiter on the ascendant, even though it's in fiery Aries, which means he really should be energetically like ADD is problematic because Jupiter burns the candle at 65 different ends. It's also immature. It's also very aware of higher knowledge, occult-wise. Remember, the centaur shoots outside of our atmosphere. So Jupiter on the ascendant in Aries means to me that he partakes in certain ritualistic behaviors that he feels he has access to and can bring about for his own controlling benefits. We have like double Capricorn Aries rising, yikes, all right? Just straight up yikes. Um, and he has a Neptune in the eighth house. So sexually the eighth house, okay? 
is your sex life. Neptune is the delusion about your sex life. Neptune is the fantasy. This is what we call porn. Fantasy, right? So he's got his Neptune there. He's got, I'm just looking at this. He's got Neptune in Scorpio. So Scorpio is down and dirty and sometimes unable to perform sexually when Neptune's involved, unless it's perverted, okay? Neptune in the eighth is always like a flag for me along with Uranus in the eighth that there's something else going on there. And that could very well be directed to the manipulation of energy because Scorpio, Scorpionic energy in Neptune can be manipulation. But what I found really super interesting about it, super interesting, okay, is Saturn conjunct Venus. Saturn in the 8th house, which it isn't, it's in the 11th conjuncting the 12th house, hidden love affairs, but Saturn brings an age difference in how you have sex because it's Venus. What do you find sexually attractive? Big age difference, okay? So we have this all over Hollywood. We have James Woods that, you know, as soon as somebody hits 25, he's ditching them and he's like 40 years older. We have all of these men in our society that are conditioned to have these decades different. That is a, it's not the same as screwing a 10 year old, but it is pedophilic in nature, even if you're both adults, because the age difference is an imbalance of power. So the person is an adult and therefore we've decided it's not illegal, okay? However, you have to ask yourself, what the hell are you doing? Like even with Cher, with that age difference, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, huh? What are you doing? Mm. Anyway. We, we do this. We have people like Humphrey Bogart in the movies with somebody decades younger, okay? Allegedly, the story is he... Now, listen to this bullshit story. Think about this story when you come back. Think about Humphrey Bogart who tells a story of meeting Lauren Bacall. This is a story that's out there. This is something they talk about. Meeting Lauren Bacall while she was eight or nine months old in her buggy in the park in New York with her mother. Then he married her. Really, dude, that's a story? Why don't we reword that story? Humphrey Bogart, and, and keep in mind who Lauren Bacall's family is connected to, the political realm, okay? Um, anyway, Lauren Bacall, let's, let's call it what it is. Predetermined families that they want put in positions of power and karmic payback, so she was given to him. Okay, let's call it what it is. Let's talk truthfully about it. Because the story is he was that old and saw her as a baby. Why would she become your wife? Why would anybody on earth think that that's normal? Because it's not. So we have Dan Schneider here who allegedly is the father of Jamie Lynn Spears' baby. That's what they say. That's the undercurrent. And we know how the Spears' father is. We know what kind of a money-hungry control freak that guy is to prostitute his kids out there to have him do whatever he wants them to do because he's the big baddie in the industry and everybody just falls in line. So we have Dan Schneider catering to parents like that. We have Ariana Grande. We have Drake Bell. Now let's look at Drake Bell. Let's look at Brian Peck. So Brian Peck involved with Brian Singer, with Marty Weiss, with Mark Collins Rector, with Charlie Sheen, who hired him after he got out of jail as well. We have all of these people. We have Brian Peck, Leonardo DiCaprio. Hello. That is why I was told the behind the scenes story about Leonardo DiCaprio with somebody who went to a party with Alan Thicke back in the 80s when that show was on air, um, whenever DiCaprio was on that show that Alan Thicke was on, I can't even think, whatever it was, that stupid show. Anyway, those stupid shows with the pretend family people, yeah, those, those shows. Anyway, Alan Thicke was the father on the show. DiCaprio was like an adopted kid who kept appearing in the show for no reason other than they wanted him there because Brian Peck was on that set. Anyway, the story that was told to me is that Leonardo DiCaprio came up to this person at the food platter tray table and told this person, I'm going to be a big star. And this person thought, how the hell do you know you're 10, right? Like, it's good that you're confident, but you're 10. 
So dues are paid by 10 year old little boys to people like Brian Peck who insert themselves in people's lives, which was apparently the case. And this is very standard MO for pedophiles. So we have Drake Bell who at risk to everything about him, his career, his friends, his family, is speaking out. So good for him for speaking out, okay? Good for him for literally outing Brian Peck, who deserves to be in jail, but isn't right now. I hope someone finds something they can catch him on. Brian Peck, born July 29th, 1960. Saturn retrograde in Capricorn, Libra moon, Sun, Venus, and Uranus in Leo. Mercury in Cancer. Okay, so we have all of this going on. So ask yourself, if you're in Hollywood and you've inserted yourself into somebody like Drake Bell's life because you fancy him, he did the strict MO move of separating him from people that cared about him in order to take control. That's like a psychopath move, a narcissist move. Um, and the word for these people is ritualized through occult methods of sodomy ritual. And that is what I'm telling you. Brian Peck is involved in circles along with Brian Singer and the rest of those people, Charlie Sheen, Brian Singer, Brian Peck, and, and anybody who supports them. And I have a list here. We have one James Marsden, one Taryn Killiam, one Alan Thicke, deceased but still putting him on the list, one Tom DeSanto, one... Um, I can't say that name. I can't read what I wrote. One Ryder Strong, one Will Friedel, and one uh, Joanna Kearns, and one Kimmy Robertson. Who are these people, you ask? These are people that two decades ago, when Brian Peck was going to jail, wrote letters to the judge on behalf of Brian Peck. Bless their hearts. And in supporting him, he wouldn't do this again. I found it interesting what Kimmy Robertson said, because she basically said he must have been tempted. <laughs> Lady, I can't. I can't. What do you what what is that statement? If that statement is true, what the fuck is that statement? He must have been tempted. He must have been pushed to the edge. Now, here's where I will agree. I heard the secret wording in that. That sounds like victim shaming, which it is. But here's a secret word in what she said. He must have been pushed. Who pushes in Hollywood? The elite occult. They're not elite, they're garbage, but these occult stars that use sodomy ritual, think P. Diddy, okay, think him, think Jay-Z, think Russell Simmons, think about these people and what they do, think about Harvey Weinstein, think about how they operate through terrorism, mental stalking, physical threats, blackmail, sodomy ritual, sodomy ritual, sodomy ritual. It's a way of putting spores in another person's energy. Start researching it occultic wise, metaphysically. They put the spores up there. They're able to harness your energy. And let's look at this in a different way. So let's take this slightly differently with Dan Schneider and Brian Peck and even Drake Bell. So somebody like, and then I'm going to add Brad Renfro to it because he succumbed to the drug addiction. It doesn't look like Drake Bell did. So what happens is when these perpetrators continue to perpetrate, they feel shame and guilt after because the human energy of them comes in. But while they are acting in a non-human way to another person and brutalizing them, they are out of body. There is energy coming into them and easily attachable to them because it's a lower vibration. Your body is a temple. When you defile another temple, you lower your vibration. So what happens is they continue to do it to try to get out of how they feel and they keep attracting more energy to them. Then people like... Um, Brad end up doing drugs and alcohol, which opens the doorways for that. And eventually they end up passing out of this energy because they can no longer stand it. Drake Bell talks about how his father was alienated, how the mother was tricked. I'm going to word it slightly different. It's his experience, but I'm going to say as a parent, no grown man wants to fucking take your kid on, okay? All you single women out there know how hard it is to get your kids' fathers to pay attention nine out of ten times. I'm talking with people going through divorce and custody. The fathers are like, yeah, I'm not going to take them. I have a girlfriend. I'm going here. I'm traveling, whatever. 
If you meet a man who's not biologically connected to your child and wants to caretake them, you should know that's a red flag. That is a red flag, especially in the entertainment industry, okay? Especially in the entertainment industry. Now, I looked up Drake Bell's chart. I've got to find it here because I got so many charts floating around. We have a June 27th, 1986. So Drake Bell is um, a little cancer, little cancer kid, sensitive, concerned, alienated from his family, abandoned, abandoned by the predator who tricked and set up the scenario. So he was born on June 27th, 1986. I don't believe we have a time of birth with him. We have uh, Cancer Sun, Pisces Moon. That's hugely sensitive. Little uh, Mercury and Venus in Leo. That's the acting side of him. Mars in Capricorn. So he found his power. Uh, Mars in Capricorn and Saturn in Uranus. I believe in Capricorn at the time, I'm thinking. I don't know if I wrote that down right. But anyway, he's in his power now. He's in his power. This will not lay to rest. And good for him. Good for him. Now, Brian Peck, it's very interesting because they say there's connections to him with John Wayne Gacy. Just, yeah, I bet the two jerk off together over the idea of what the two, the two of these freaks are doing. Anyway, and I'm being serious when I say that. Understand what you're dealing with is demonic behavior by people who can't even behave like civilized human beings. Now, what I picked up with the Gacy thing and the pen pal thing, John Wayne Gacy is a charismatic figure. He's also a demon and they can, by that I mean energetically, he's been compromised. So his behavior has led his human entity to be forced out of the physical. So other things inhabit his husk. I'm going to call it a husk. Okay, he's got a physical body and a face and I don't even know if he's still alive. But Brian Peck being his pen pal is interesting. Because the thing that John Wayne Gacy needs so badly is his addiction to the sodomy ritual. He needs it. He needs to hear about it. He needs to see it visually Neptunian. And what is John Gain Gacy? My God, he's a St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, 1942. Bitch ass, serial killing, targeting, sodomy ritualistic, abusive entity living in a husk that isn't even human. But we give him human rights in prison. He's not human. If you were to look at him, he's not human. You would see him. He's not human. Anyway, we look at John Wayne Gacy, who is a little St. Patrick's Day person born on that day. He is a Pisces. His whole life is about manipulating reality to fantasy. His fantasy, keeping the bodies with him under the house keeping this, that, and around him. So where does he get his fantasy fix? He gets his fantasy fix from some weirdo like Brian Peck who decides to befriend him. And if my camera just shut down again, of course Gacy's going to ask him what he's into because he's going to know that's the only kind of person, someone who cares for children, isn't going to be pen palling or buying artwork, aka Tom Cruise, from John Wayne Gacy because he killed people who are your kid's age. I mean, what? Not Brian Peck, but Tom Cruise. So when you look at these people in the entertainment industry and the connection between Brian Peck and John Wayne Gacy, that is fascinating because that ties to it the telepathy, remote viewing, and experience of the ritual to John Wayne Gacy in jail. That is what's going on. They are doing all of these things and regular people who live a day-to-day -day life and pay their 10 bucks to go to the movie with their girlfriend and get a soda and have some popcorn are not thinking like that. And in fact, it's a huge disservice to tell your children to treat others as you want to be treated. You don't have to treat people badly, but you need to be aware and you need to observe the behavior of others and make a mental note of it. And you can still treat them, but you need to protect yourself first. So many of these children were abused because people choose on a very, almost like false pride level to say, I don't want to think of them that way. Why? What's it to you to think if your son's music teacher, photographer, voice court coach is a pedophile? Why don't you want to think that? What's wrong with you? 
Why don't you want to entertain that? Like, we're not saying you have to do anything about it, but you can observe that you had the thought. You don't want to think about it, so it's about you and what you want to think. No, parents right now, think about the reality of it. Now, what I really loved when I listened to the Drake Bell um, interview was how his girlfriend's, when he was 15, mother picked up on it right away. Bravo, girlfriend's mom. I don't know her name, but bravo to her because she picked up on the energy of it immediately, immediately. And he said he felt safe over there, which means his own parents weren't protecting him. I feel like the father tried to protect him from what he said, but he was pushed out of the family. And Brian Peck did what deviant sociopaths do with perverted. See, Brian Peck is still a little boy being raped by his own family member, taking it out on other little boys. Scared, acting all controlling. So is Dan Schneider. Once you put it into perspective and you understand that when you have a family member that has gone through this, you have to help them with the trauma because they will keep perpetrating it. And that is what this is about. The re- victimization of both the perpetrator and the, the victim, the current new victim, and how that continues on. That's part of the ritual as well. That is what needs to be stopped. We need to stop that immediately. What are we doing? We don't do that as a society. I've literally heard people in family say, oh, I don't want to think that about uncle so-and-so. What is wrong with you? If someone tells you that, or you even have a gut feeling, you don't have to go after them, but watch your kid and observe behavior and step in for your child. The industry, here's what here's the prediction of this whole thing that I'm going around in circles with. The prediction of this coming out is you're going to find out what everybody knows, okay? What everybody knows. Again, I tell a story on many of my lives about John Travolta going back to when I was 13 and a runaway. One of the times I ran away watching a movie being filmed and one of my 15 year old runaway guy friends and what he told me about John Travolta way back then. Where is this coming from now? This is coming from a hidden Twitter account of Amanda Bynes when she was under conservatorship saying that John Travolta essayed her. Look at little Amanda Bynes. Look at her. What happened to her when she was 12 and on Nickelodeon? She's in April 3rd, by the way. What happened to her? Did she get pregnant and have to terminate the pregnancy and that drive her crazy? Why do her parents want to put her under conservatorship? Why does she talk about her father the way she did and then recant it? Because she's having trauma bonded memories from the experiences. And back when she was in that conservatorship, she had a secret Twitter account that she used under a different name. And she mentions John Travolta. This is common knowledge. This is common knowledge. I had many a client and many a friend that worked on movies with John Travolta who had to rehire male staff, rehire them because he would grope them and they would quit. Young boys, probably not the old ones. The same with Kevin Spacey. I heard this at local coffee shops about Kevin Spacey walking on the set. People on those sets would tell the young people walking on to watch out for him. Why is this allowed? Nothing is done because it's big celebrities with big money. They got their big money by ritualizing people and they become so ravenous and hungry for their ritual. Okay, look at it that way. Their predilection. So once they get a taste for it and once they start it, they become consumptive about it. So it's like a crack addict going out on a crack bender. All right, and they're like, give me the crack, give me the meth. And they take so much their eyeballs pop out of their head. You're thinking, why won't, Why don't you just like ration it out for a couple of days and not get so stinking batshit crazy? Well, because they're on crack and they want it all. That's how these forces work energetically. The more that they're at the lower vibration of sexual abuse, sodomy ritual, they access all the chakras up the body. They have normalized this in porn. Like all of us should just bend over and let everybody do whatever. No, and especially not children, obviously. But They've normalized it as if it's something to be done. What they're not telling you is that you have access to a person's chakra system all the way up and down to the crown chakra and what goes outside of the body. And that is how you fracture a child, okay? So you can fracture them. The more the children takes the drugs and alcohol, the demonic energy, and I'm going to use that word, I don't know what else to say, 
the entities that are around us that are not positive that can then follow that child because of the spores left in them and if the child's a drug addict or using escapist tendencies or drinking too much or fucking too much or sex addicted what do you think sex addiction is it's an addiction food addiction dan schneider walks onto nickelodeon with a body and the shape of his body and the body down here in the pelvic region, the way that he's out of shape tells me what happened to him. You can look at his aura and see it. So why is he perpetrating it? He's a double Capricorn. He's supposed to have more integrity and supposed to work towards it. But here's what I can tell you. Huge karma with Capricorns. Huge karma. That karma is coming down right now. So Dan Schneider has about two and a half years and he's out. Brian Singer, same, but in a different way. Brian Singer is now going to be exiled. You're going to start to see it. This year is a roller coaster of energy. Drake Bell. Now, this is so interesting because he's going to trigger an onslaught of people telling their stories and go back throughout the entertainment industry. Why are we allowing these people onto our TVs? Why are we listening to Johnny Carson, Jay Leno, uh, whoever, what's his name? <laughs> I can't even think of his name. Jim, Jimmy Kimball, uh, the other one, the idiot one, all of them. Who are you? Get off our TV. You're part of it. You don't stand up for it. Y'all talk politics. Why isn't one of you on any of these TV shows talking about the sexual abuse and exploitation of children in the entertainment industry? Not one of you says it because you're a shill and a piece of shit human being because you want your money, your work, and your power, and you don't care whose kid gets sodomized. That's the reality of it. Just as long as you get your little award and you stand there and tell your dumbass jokes, Stephen Colbert. Bear. That's the dumb one. Why aren't these people, why isn't the view saying anything? Why do they talk ad nauseum about politics? Why don't you talk about Les Moonves? Why don't you talk? Oh, what? Because you're on the network? Why don't you say something? You don't say shit. You put up with it. Bill Cosby was able to do what he did because all of you wanted a paycheck off his back, which makes you complicit. So then you need to speak up. You need to say something. You need to watch your children. Every single talk show. So stop watching these people. Don't watch their movies. Don't, partici don't participate in it. Boycott them. Because everything in the entertainment industry, and this is another thing, which is totally off topic. Everything in the entertainment industry, these producers, these directors, these art directors, especially art directors, these people ritually abuse other people including adult young males on set and younger actors and they are given license to travel into other countries with these underage actors with them and third world countries where they scoop up things and people sean penn haiti they are able to do these things clinton foundation wrong and they take these kids and they abuse them and the networks pay big money these people buy big houses have big expensive cars have their beard ass wives and their kids that they groom bradley cooper i walk around naked my father did it with me my daughter's okay with it i'm not saying there's anything wrong with the naked body but you have a daughter. Your daughter's going to go into hormones and men uh, menopause. Her period. <laughs> she's not going to go into menopause. She's going to get her period. And she's going to want to be modest. She doesn't want to see her dad's dingling walking around. Does she? I mean, you listen to these celebrities and they say that. Madonna wrote a book about it. It was either a 12 or 15 year old boy that she had sex with. What is like what? Why do we give these people money? Why do we continue to do that? Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Finally, the blind items about Don Henley, which I heard via someone who knew him, but there was the procuring by his agent of underage girls with pills and drugs and overdose and the ridding of a body. The rape, the sexual abuse, keep the little celebrity happy. Fuck them. Stand up against them. Stop working for them. Doesn't matter if you lose money. What are you doing? What are we all doing? So I hope there's a huge movement in 2024, and I believe there will be. And on my list of this movement, John Travolta, Brian Singer, Brian Peck, Dan Schneider, um, any of these people, I am 
literally praying that they are removed off their pedestals that we put them on because we are born into families that say this, that was the cat. Um, we are born into families that say this, that, and the other, like, oh, the Oscars are so important. The Oscars are graphed for sexual abuse, okay? Just know that. Know that when you're showing up at those award shows, someone who's getting an Oscar is bent over and you know what, okay, or suck dick. Just look at it that way and stop idolizing these people. All of those kids on Nickelodeon are traumatized. And then once they're traumatized, what happens? They're traumatized and they have to have sex with adults in positions of power in order to escape whatever it is they don't want to have happen at home. They get depression. They get anxiety. What does depression and anxiety do? It energetically opens up your chakra system and your etheric body to lower vibrations that can cling on. Once those lower vibrations cling on, what happens? You take drugs. You have random sex. You do things you wouldn't normally do. That's how they keep you stuck. Start treating yourself better and people better and watch your kids in the entertainment industry because Dan Schneider is up there. And as he said, the network approved everything he did. So when you're looking at Nickelodeon and they're pouring green slime over kids and <laughs> laughing at it, understand what that green slime represents. They got it in sperm banks, okay? Understand and don't tell me no and oh, that doesn't happen because you can't think about it. Understand we're not dealing on a normal level. We are dealing in an occult realm along with perversion. So it's the combination of these things and our entire world has been hijacked by it. That's what's happening with Nickelodeon. Now, it is interesting with Drake Bell because I feel this is only gonna open up his career in a different way. So those people on that show talking about Nickelodeon are 100% going to be pushed up publicly to speak about it in order to educate. That is what's going to happen. And I hope the entire entertainment industry, as it's known, is shut down. Go back to Judy Garland, whose father slept with the head of whichever network it was because he was gay and married to his beard. And then Judy Garland, or not Judy, Liza Minnelli married her gay husband. So did Judy. Judy was on pills because they tortured her. Here, take, take uppers so you perform. Go to sleep, shut up. Stop eating, drink coffee, smoke. 47, not her fault. Not her fault, driven insane by these people. Look at um, Shirley Temple Black and the baby burlesque. Watch that. They called it baby burlesque. Ask yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so fucking absurd. Ask yourself. You've got an industry that pushes movies out with 40 plus year old men that all take a cruise together. Okay. And they all have like ascots on and shit and they all dine. And then you got little Shirley Temple. She's four, five, and six with her little frilly underwear on and her cute little, you know, Mary Jane shoes. And she's sucking a lollipop and singing the good ship lollipop with all these men. We're not a woman in sight. Not a fucking woman in sight. Who's green lighting those movies and why is that a theme? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, why is that a theme? And then you have Robert Blake who goes bananas and allegedly kills his baby mama. And you've got that. Why? He was a child actor. What happened to him that made him disconnect like that? What happened to him? Ask yourself that when you see these people that come from these families. It's ritualized abuse under the guise of perversion in order to elevate for control, manipulation, and power over the masses that watch the movies. Okay, I've said enough. Anyway, this is my little energy reading slash rant on this topic that I talk about nonstop incessantly. And once again, my name is Slash.